Hi, wow. Bedro. Hello, Sir Dale. Did Hello, we go live? How are you? Uh, have uh, some uh, technical problem. Please wait a second. I can hear you fine. It's a little dark in your room, though. Ah, uh, yes, uh, because uh, two big screens uh, I'm watching uh, and analyzing uh, some uh, gold uh, and uh, oil, the uh, Euro USD, uh, GAPI, and so on. Okay, so uh, is it because Putin's cutting uh, uh, energy supplies to Croatia, too? Uh, yes, uh, but uh, when we uh, talked yesterday, we mentioned uh, some uh, changes in the oil. Uh, for now, the, my price in oil is uh, around uh, 50, yeah. and uh, this is 100% uh, uh, of the retracement of the fall be before uh, two months, actually. Okay, you know there's a better way to share your screen. Uh, you just go up to the green box. Did you try it? On the upper left-hand corner, you'll see screen share. It's a, it's yes, a yes. green box with an arrow. See that? Okay. The green box yes. with an arrow. Click that. Beautiful. Uh, do you, do okay, you? beautiful. So we don't see you, but we can see your charts better. So, yeah, that, this is a gold USD. Okay, so you know, just before we get to the markets and your ideas, yes. I'm curious because it, it is somewhat unusual that people want to be interviewed and um, share with the community, uh, you know, what they're doing and their journey. So why don't you start off with telling us how long you've been doing this and. Um, I know your training academically is in economics, so tell us about uh, your journey and what motivated you to get involved in trading and what led you to Forex. Actually, thank you for the question, uh, Sir Dale. It's a great honor to have an interview with you because uh, you are working on the CNBC, the biggest uh, U.S. television about the finance. And uh, how I started, uh, that was uh, before uh, 15 years. On Croatian market, I was uh, buying and selling uh, some stocks. Okay. And uh, m uh, this is uh, not, uh, how I explain, uh, too good uh, for me. I was uh, finding uh, something faster. And uh, after that, I go to the uni university in Osijek. Uh, and uh, start working for uh, different uh, companies from uh, Europe, United States, uh, Croatia, uh, Croatian television, uh, radio, uh, and my domestic uh, uh, radio, Croatian radio, Županja, here is in uh, Croatia. And uh, must go to finish uh, my university, and uh, that was a stop in. Uh, Trading uh, stocks, uh, forex, and uh, other stuff. After I finished that, I just want to come back on the market, but it's uh, too hard to back uh, on the market on the live accounts. And uh, I was starting with uh, some uh, demo accounts uh, to practice, to remind uh, how I was trading, uh, okay. training, uh, psychological training, technical trading, and uh, I find you. Uh, and you suggest me that uh, I, if I have a time that I have a great analysis, technical and fundamental, that I go on the micro account and now I am uh, working on a micro account. Okay. All right. And uh, uh, why don't you tell us, and you know, kind of be a little bit of a LAR commercial, what benefit are you getting out of finding this community? Uh, you know, uh, the first uh, is uh, when I find uh, I was listening for you. Uh, you have experience. Uh, you are the member of the Chicago markets, and uh, you are t uh, trading about uh, 30 years. And uh, this uh, experience for me is uh, priceless. Because uh, I that, okay, so that was your preconceived notion. Um, and I bet what you found out when you came in that, you know, oh, no. you came thinking I was going to be a, a major piece of guidance for you. And yes. I believe what you found 
is much more depth uh, through our community of different traders using different methods and uh, sharing yes. their ideas because uh, I know it gives me an edge and uh, is that what you discovered is that there's strength in numbers and not one person knows everything. Uh, yes, but uh, like uh, yesterday you said to me, it's better uh, four eyes than two, and uh, I agree with it. Uh, and uh, I like to hear any opinion, any fundamental analysis, any uh, technical analysis, and uh, I make some uh, uh, middle price for action and go in the market on uh, my uh, analysis. Can I ask you how? Can I ask you how old you are, veteran? Uh, I have thirty-seven. Okay, so uh, your childhood must have been very tumultuous with what was happening in the Balkans. Uh, what happened on the Balkans? Uh, in the Balkans uh, during the Balkan during the war, the Croatian there were yeah. you know there there you know uh, NATO had to step in. Yes. So, yes. So, uh, uh, were you were you affected in your early years by what was happening around you, geopolitically? Yeah. Yes. So uh, I was uh, at this uh, when the war started. I have uh, ten or eleven years and uh, finished wow. my gymnasium and uh, and the war conditions. And uh, this was uh, 1996. After that, uh, I go to the university in uh, Osijek. And uh, from 1996, uh, we have uh, uh, ended uh, our Croatian war for the independent. Right. And uh, actually, tomorrow is an uh, independent uh, day in Croatia. It's uh, actually it's a holiday. Okay. Well, you know, uh, you definitely uh, must have snaga because most of us that are in the community today have not experienced war on our own soil. We watch it on television, we read about it, but you had first-hand experience. How did that shape your world view and what impact did that have on your life moving forward when you knew that things weren't always going to be, uh, you, were, you lived through a crisis, a major crisis that most people yeah. do not have to. I'm curious about that. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, when you have uh, teenage years uh, in the war, you must uh, starting uh, life again. Uh, I've, I found uh, myself uh, in the University of uh, Economics uh, in Osijek, and uh, when I was uh, starting uh, study, I was uh, uh, before that uh, have uh, one small uh, rock band, and we are playing and uh, trying to living. Uh, some on some way that uh, this war is not uh, happened to us, but you know the life is life. You never know what what is uh, happening, what will be tomorrow, yes. and uh, that's, that's uh, usual. So it, did it give you uh, a sense of today is all you have and make the most out of today? And you talk about starting to live again or starting life over um, in the markets, people that blow yep. up accounts have to learn to yes. start their trading life over. And you know, I have a saying, you don't lose till you quit. I've blown up accounts, but I'm still in the game. So you reassess, you regroup, you're, you rearm with ammunition, and you learn from your mistakes. and. Uh, that problem, that early childhood thing, must give you resiliency, so that when you're wrong on a trade, that's nothing compared to dodging bullets. Yes, yes, you have actually right. This is a psychological part of the trading and the forex market. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, this is the part of uh, some uh, fundamental analysis. If mm -hmm. uh, you have a bad fundamental and you are not uh, very stable on the psychological uh, level, you will uh, have uh, all time uh, bad trades, and this this is not uh, good uh, only for for real accounts. Uh, this uh, is uh, very bad on the demo. If something to to trying studying uh, and uh, other stuff. First of okay. all, is the 
social environment that uh, must uh, we understand and be exactly uh, exactly a psychological stable person because uh, you must decide on uh, uh, if you have a great technical analysis you must uh, decide uh, to go in trade and for how much right so uh, I've been watching your charts now for several weeks and why don't we take it now to this segment being about what your views are on a few markets and I hope you don't mind me uh, delving into your past but I think it uh, holds value for people that take for granted that we're living in peace which is now looking more fragile in the world and that uh, we could even leave a door open and there's food on uh, the shelves at the grocery store and a lot of us take these simple um, necessities for granted that in certain situations those basic things that we take for granted become luxuries. Yep. Okay, so enough history. Uh, you're only as good as your last call. Take it away, buddy. So we're looking at gold. Uh, we are looking at the gold. I well, actually I am looking gold in the, from a Croatian perspective. This is uh, that uh, Croatia is the part of the European Union and is a proud member of uh, NATO. So uh, if we uh, have some uh, geopolitical uh, understanding, what is happening on the Middle East and uh, who is buying and uh, who is selling the gold uh, behind the lines. This is actually not uh, what uh, I'm seeing uh, on the market at the moment. Now we have uh, 1,145, uh, the price of, of uh, gold, but uh, I think uh, that uh, 150 to 156, maybe in this area around the uh, Fibonacci uh, retracement of the 61.8, that will be the top for the month. Actually, this triangle is uh, broken. I was showing uh, the people uh, yesterday and uh, on, on Monday uh, this uh, graph and uh, this is now broken triangle. Its uh, price is going up. But uh, we, I very closely watching what is uh, happening in Syria. This is the biggest question for now because uh, Russian army uh, have a big influence on this territory and uh, if uh, Russians uh, uh, go on the field with uh, tanks and uh, other stuff with uh, humans I think the price of uh, gold and oil but uh, I will explain oil uh, just a little bit later uh, will fell down because of this area this is the most uh, great uh, countries uh, very rich countries who have uh, oil and a lot of gold so if they have uh, no money and this uh, country is in uh, in the war like uh, Croatia is before uh, 15 years we will sell uh, a lot of gold and the gold price is will uh, in at that moment uh, going down because uh, uh, a lot of uh, people, a lot of countries uh, will. So you think gold. the oil producers uh, like Russia that they, because they're in a cash crunch, they're going to liquidate some of their gold stockpile? Uh, about oil, I have no chart on on this. Uh, on okay, this, well, who are the buyers in the gold and who are the sellers in your view? Uh, the buyers of gold for now is no one, and uh, sellers, uh, the sellers' uh, sentiment uh, will be very high. But uh, I, like I say before, a few minutes, uh, it's po it's very possible that uh, Russian military go with the uh, tanks on the field, battlefield, mm -hmm. and uh, in this case, uh, uh, I think the the selling of gold will be uh, very 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 high. Uh, if you look at the China market, the China is... Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so you think Russia, because they need money to finance these military yes, operations, will sell gold? Uh, yes, and uh, okay, also... And you think China, because of the financial mess in their markets, 
and they've been the hugest buyers over the last five years. You think they're going to sell gold? Uh, yes, uh, because of uh, you know uh, the money market is uh, is uh, very hard to to explain. If uh, China uh, will support the Russia, uh, they uh, money supply on are on monthly basis. Maybe two months that uh, uh, they have a handle uh, on the money, but uh, they will selling uh, gold uh, to finance uh, this uh, this war. And they're expecting that the price of gold actually in next, I don't know, one month will be go down. Especially if we see on this area United States who will hiking the rates. And this is also a very big question. We actually don't thinking about hiking rates in in the United States because this will happen. Our, uh, in my opinion, that will will be in the February, and uh, what will happen now? Uh, actually, uh, we decide uh, to go on the on the other side uh, because uh, if Fed high rates, uh, nobody is asking uh, for how much, but we are asking for how much. You know, this will be very destabilizing for for the bond market. Uh, and uh, when you get a gold in this market, this will be very hard to understand uh, where the price uh, will be. So on the gold, I will choose uh, to trade in on a fundamental uh, uh, level because uh, if uh, United States and uh, Fed hike. Uh, Around four uh, percent. This is uh, my opinion, and this is very high. Uh, the bond markets uh, will explode. Actually, will be crashed. But I'm speaking of the states bond. Okay, you're the treasury bond. Uh, treasury bonds, yes. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> this war in uh, Syria, I think that some state uh, will be erased from the maps. Uh, you know what? Uh, early, I always had an interest in prophecy, and uh, I've always had one eye on Syria because there is a prophecy that Damascus will be turned into ashes, and uh, uh, just keep an eye on it. It's always kind of stuck in my head. And any time there was something happening in Syria, it, it is the oldest city on earth. Okay. Yeah, uh, the oldest city. I mean, it goes back to. The Persian and Babylonian empires. It's been around that long, so uh, I find it uh, a little bit uh, surreal what's happening there. Knowing yeah, yeah, yeah. it's surreal. It's surreal. So uh, this this Fibonacci levels, I uh, the, uh, this is the the highest price, and uh, this is for now lowest price, but uh, expecting uh, still. Uh, big volatility and uh, expecting uh, actually this is a uh, Haken Ashi mm -hmm. uh, and uh, will uh, trade the uh, fundamental 60 70 percent fundamental 30 to 40 percent technical okay and so that, what are your downside targets if uh, what you say happens and uh, some of the bigger accumulators of gold sell uh, where could that take gold down to uh, under 1,000. Okay, and uh, the, pre the previous lows were 1070. You looking for new lows? Uh, yes. And uh, if a war stop and uh, Fed is uh, hiking the rates, uh, expecting actually in the fifth or sixth month 2016 uh, below 950. Okay. Thank you very much for your outlook on gold. Uh, any other market you want to cover during this call? Well, you asking, uh, I am answering, and uh, if you are interested in uh, maybe uh, pound uh, Japanese yen. Okay, let's see the yen. Yeah, we see uh, tomorrow, uh, excuse me, yesterday. Oh, okay, the copy, yeah. I showed the post where, when we uh, was uh, around uh, here. And yeah. targeting uh, 184.30. Uh, 
on some, somewhere on, on this area. Actually, yeah. this is the sorry, sorry. Yeah, and it got back to eighty three ninety or so, didn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, I think the pound is is very weak because uh, something is uh, happening uh, uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, the uh, prime minister talking about the war in Syria, and uh, I don't know what, what what is happening, but I think the pound is very weak. Uh, we have uh, uh, some uh, depreciation of the Japanese uh, yen, and uh, this uh, economy in uh, Japan is working, and pound uh, is uh, still on the same level from uh, I don't know how about to say. But one or two months, it's uh, actually is nothing happening. Uh, or if we look to me, on the, to me, it looks like it's starting to develop a uh, descending triangle, where you have a straight line against that low and the low uh, back in September, and yes. you start getting some declining highs, lower highs, and this is just corrective, and that's a pretty big formation. I think you're yes. talking about. Uh, Almost a thousand pips, so back under that 181 level next time could take us to 170. Yes, but it's not usual uh, uh, for pound. This is actually where uh, the the pair who is uh, extremely uh, heavy and extremely dangerous uh, to trade because it's jumping uh, around uh, 100 pips in uh, five to ten minutes. But something is going on. I, I don't believe actually that the pound is so weak because uh, I was in London before uh, two or three months and uh, speaking with uh, just uh, commercials and other stuff and uh, actually they are living very well. And uh, about the, tomorrow is uh, hiking rates in the, in the United Kingdom actually voting for that, hike or no hike. I think uh, that uh, tomorrow we will uh, have uh, no hike. The United Kingdom will uh, wait from your Fed or, or in uh, United States. The Fed uh, decide to hike rates. Uh, after that, uh, United Kingdom will do. It. So we have this level at uh, 184, maybe 184.30. And uh, this is a level what uh, closely uh, look to sell actually uh, uh, the pound and buy the Japanese yen. Mm -hmm. and, and export is, is a very, very big stuff in the United Kingdom. If we sell it on this area, I think the pound maybe go to the 175, maybe below. This uh, depreciation of the uh, pound and the England will uh, help uh, the economy uh, for uh, exports. Okay. And, and that's my real opinion, what, what I'm looking at. Because right. we have now last uh, two, three days, uh, I don't see the pound, uh, it's so weak, but markets it's showing the, that uh, pound is weak. But I don't believe in that. I think the pound uh, will uh, have uh, just a little bit to go down and uh, around this area, 175 and 200 uh, after that. Because okay. the export uh, in United Kingdom uh, of appreciation of the uh, British pound uh, will uh, high value it. Okay, so that's a Nostra veteran call, down to 175 and then back up to 200. Um, we have another interview, buddy, coming up in about seven minutes. So um, okay. I'd like to I'd like to wrap it up with uh, your great addition to our community. We appreciate you sharing your work every day with us and teaching me a key word, snaga, because we all yes. need it as traders and and sharing your life story with us uh, in your early years, having lived through. A real battlefield. Uh, this is only a financial battlefield. So, really glad to know you, veteran. And how about everyone giving uh, veteran uh, some encouragement for coming on the air to talk about his life and a few ideas that he's sharing with us going forward. So, uh, thank you, my trading warrior brother, for sharing your stuff and and speaking to our whole community today. It's a great honor to have an interview with you, Sir Dale.
And uh, I I want to say hello to Sir Mauricio. Okay, uh, we Mauricio and I thank you and may pips rain down on you from this day forward, my friend. Yes, have a thank good you. trading to all. Thank you. Thank you, veteran.